Okay, uh, hello everyone. My name is Leo Haverman and I'm here with Verena Roberts and we're going to talk about perspectives on pandemic pedagogy and the need for an open pivot. Uh, and I guess that um, you could say that we have come to this as uh, very much as open education researchers who also have day jobs. Um, and, um, and so on this um, this slide, which I hope everyone can see, um, it's a little bit of our um, bios <laughs> um, about what, what these jobs are. Um, and so for, for me, I'm a digital education advisor at University College London. Um, I'm also um, a doctoral researcher at the Open University in the UK. Um, so I'm researching open education, but also I'm uh, very much involved in supporting um, the, our sort of uh, everyday normal digital pedagogies um, in a regular um, sort of uh, research focused higher education institution and um, and um, and obviously that 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 really means in a, an organization where um, suddenly doing everything online that we have been um, recently was far from normal um, and uh, Verena would you like to say a bit about your background too? I am um, my dissertation work in open educational practices in K-12, specifically high school or secondary learning environments. I'm also a learning designer with uh, UBC, so the University of British Columbia, helping uh, instructors get their courses online. I'm a sessional instructor with uh, University of Victoria and University of Calgary. Um, I'm an educational specialist as a consultant uh, with Cybera Callisto project, which looks at open data science and how that how we can integrate open data into K-12 curriculum. I also teach high school online, just one course, and I have a mom of three kids in the middle of this pandemic. So let's go to the next slide. So that's, uh, oh, I'm advancing the wrong one. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, uh, um, so as we said in the abstract, the proposal for this session was almost unwritten, um, and that was because um, for um, for me, where work was just crazy ever since um, since March, um, with you know just incredibly busy days, uh, like uh, five or six hours of meetings a day, and then still trying to do the the you know the job um, outside of those. And um, and that, that's that's really continued until um, until now. Although it's I think it's starting now that people are busy teaching, they have a little bit less time to want to have meetings. So that's been been better. <laughs> um, and um, and one of the things we noticed was that that there was um, a, really a deluge of advice and discussion around how to do online teaching was happening during this um, during this period. Um, which the and the volume of that was was so much that was hard for hard for us to keep up to because we were busy doing the work and Verena I don't know if you want to talk a bit also about what you were busy with um, at the at the beginning and 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 later on. Well, I think at the beginning um, and specific to opening and open educational resources and to integrate our open learning design into what was happening in our world was very problematic because we had we felt we had to go back to basic and try to explain things from the beginning to people who uh experience online learning at even though we've been in this world for many years <laughs> and we'll discuss that a little bit more and how our identity almost had to change and we had to rethink the way that we bring others with their and uh, field. So we'll go to the next slide. It discusses it a bit more. So these are experiences that maybe some of you have. Ha oh my! my oh, there we go. Might have uh, experienced yourselves. For example, my whole literally remember reading it, and every single day it something about I'll be spending, and then I did see this image and laughed because that's how it felt, like everything was in lockdown and overwhelming. Um, for me, I have three children. I didn't actually lock them up like that, but I do remember the feeling of not being able to get anything done and feeling contained. And and as I, I, I was lucky, my husband has been very supportive as well at home um, to help me support with the children. 
times. It was with another, this constant expectation of doing many tasks. And as we see in the middle, I'm literally places at once. And I was presenting in two conferences at the same time. So my son actually took a picture of it because he was impressed that uh, I could do it but to other people. So uh, we, uh, we had the, the, the photo that was captioned working from home and, um, and it, it also kind of um, made me think of a, um, some, something that I've seen somewhere which I can no longer source, but where somebody was talking about we're not, what we're doing now is not really working from home as it, as it once was. We're really living at work. And, um, and that really resonated with me. A few more. Um, and this this expanded into the news, so it wasn't only our own environments. And we're not superheroes. I'm laughing at the chat. This is our reality. We're expected to do everything, and that ongoing expectation of being able to do everything well um, has taken a, a turn for the worse in many ways. But this one was priceless when I saw this in Twitter. Good morning to all the kids under quarantine in Wuhan who defeat app signing the work, buying it with their one star reviews until it got removed. So while I appreciated that, because I found how students were jumping into this experience and using their digital literacies to change the way we're thinking about online learning, I don't think everyone else appreciated the same way as, as we see in this picture of the, the teacher who scorned YouTubers and the idea of using videos and now he's doing it all the time and needs to do it himself. And then we have just taken from the paper where the UFC students can suddenly opt out of a, a letter grade and the idea of assessment is the I, ideas and perceptions of it going out the window. <clears throat> so do you wanna the next visuals? So, um, so when we uh, were thinking about our title, um, Pandemic Pedagogy, um, we, the more that we thought about it, the more we realized it had, it had kind of more, more meaning to it than we had initially. Um, you know, initially we were just drawn to the alliteration, but, um, but I, I thought that, you know, first of all, the obvious question that we were wrestling with was how, how to try and teach and learn in the context of the pandemic. But um, then the second question was actually um, more emergent. Uh, what, what is the pandemic teaching us? Um, at the beginning of the of this process, we didn't realize that there would be so much to learn, and by that I mean I mean um, for, for 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 everyone in uh, in um, in society. As time went on, we would see how the pandemic exposed and magnified inequalities, and we would come to understand how fragile our normal is. So. Because of this, we were starting to think about identities and narratives in the early trend in the early part of the pandemic, and then how um, these um, started to evolve as it continued. Um, and so, one of the um, ideas that that we came up with was to think about um, these kind of pandemic identities and education um, in um, in terms of these kind of avian um, metaphors. <laughs> of ostriches, owls, and vultures. And if if anyone has any thoughts on who might be an ostrich, um, who might be an owl, <laughs> who might be a vulture in the context of um, education um, during COVID, feel free to um, drop some thoughts in the chat. Because I don't think that it's, um, you know, necessarily our views on this are um, are the only take on it but um, but certainly um, what what we felt was that there were there were these kind of quite quite different perspectives on on what what's going what's going on here and what we um, what we what we should be getting out of it as it were um, Christine is saying ostrich those who hoped it would all just go away soon absolutely um yeah, uh, <laughs> lots of ostriches there still are lots of ostriches and, and jen make a good point too we originally when we were in metaphors were the bird that does everything and is in every context and we thought of ourselves as chickens at one point and and all sorts of things we're so wondering we have... if we were battery chickens um <laughs> <laughs> or we rain chickens or okay um, so, uh, so one of these, um, one of the, the kind of narratives that went along with, uh, 
we think the the ostriches of the situation was you know maybe this will all just go away um and um and 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 i think that this this narrative has kind of evolved towards when things go back to normal i'm hearing more of that um now that now that it hasn't just gone away but it's a, a sort of a um a, a sense that um that things will return to you know exactly as they once were um and we won't we won't have to worry about doing this um <laughs> doing these things anymore all this this pesky online learning and teaching and and we're noticing this this emphasis this on back normal is coming in with with institutional and government policies that we need to be considerate of and and not necessarily be guided by it which which is scary for many of us, especially in leadership positions, but instead recognize that there are ostriches that are leading the way, which can be very dangerous. Next and slide. I think that one of the, the things also that we, we wanted to mention here is that, that, that this, this actually is um, in, in some ways, although there, although there is some degree of acknowledgement at a kind of um, institutional and, and governmental kind of policy level of the fact that this is going on, there is still a bit of an ostrich mentality around like everything that we're doing now is um, is a sort of a, a temporary um, sort of you know band aid solution that will be. Um, but 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 th this this also goes along with the frustrating kind of um, uh, narrative around how uh, doing things online is, is is evidently second class and undesirable, which. Um, I have to say it's been kind of infuriating not to see um, some of the institutions that we work in kind of push back harder against that one. Um, and good point, Helen, and I would say the stereotype of ostriches is that they actually put their heads in the ground and inaccurate is actually not a fact. And so the irony of the stereotypes and, and making up stereotypes and following uh, previous notions and previous misconceptions is also happening within this time of COVID. So the next is, do, so another, do we remember the phase? <laughs> important narrative of this pandemic has been, you know, you can have something free for five minutes, or, you know, in some cases, maybe it was more like five weeks or even five months, but we definitely had a lot of vendors um, and publishers um, kind of showing up, um, sort of claiming that they're on their um, white horse <laughs> and, um, and um, oh we'll let you um, have something free and um, and actually um, you know this this tended to be um, sort of you know until the 30th of June or you know there's some kind of uh, like not very um, helpful um, length of time that this um, support was available for and um, and meanwhile, of course, people were saying, oh, this is fantastic. We can use this thing. Um, this, this will help us get through and then kind of becoming dependent on it. And that, that, was, that was obviously the hope was that people would say, well, actually we need this. Now we're gonna have to pay for it. Um, <laughs> exactly, exactly, Jennifer. And, um, and it, so this was um, the, in, really interestingly, the, a kind of epilogue of that phase is um, in the UK at the moment, there is a kind of big rebellion going on amongst um, university librarians and a lot of other staff are signing the, um, the petition as well, um, asking for a um, kind of government investigation into, um, into the pricing of eBooks, which have um, the, the cost of which has kind of been going nuts. Um, and you know, was, it's not that they were cheap before, but now it seems like there's an opportunity to really, uh, you know, get us while we can't get people into the library, as it were. So we're going to go through the next slides a little faster. <laughs> yeah. So the next one, talk about this is our moment. And we're seeing readings now of proponents, open, flexible and distance education. This is the best of times. I'm not really sure sure where this person is coming from, but I'd not say this is the best of times for me. Uh, this is the time for open to come into its own. Well, we'll talk about that a bit more. As, um, okay, let's go to the next slide, Leo. Okay. So we thought, you know, all of these uh, kind of um, identities are, are really neglecting the, um, the, the reality of the trauma that people are going through and what people are trying to cope with. And the, the fact that maybe what people really um, needed 
um, during this time was just um, a, a, a bit of sense of connection and care um, and that other people are interested in them and um, and and you know are actually trying to uh, support them to get through this and that some of those those um, things might actually be more significant than um, specific you know learning objectives <laughs> so that yeah this is just the example I think I've heard more often than not at um, yeah that we're building the as, as we go, and if we keep going, actuality, next slide, we're overwhelming. And we're hearing this over and over, trauma and the well take last week out of the headlines from K-12, from higher edu community colleges around the world. If we go to the next slide. <laughs> Um, and so, uh, so you know, this is kind of where where we we um, came to uh, the need for, the need for an open pivot, the need for thinking about um, sh sharing um, learning from others, using using what what already exists, not trying to reinvent the wheel over and over again, um, not saying we need to freshly discover um, the the latest and greatest new X ray specs um, because the last time somebody did it was five years ago and we've forgotten. Um, but instead to, um, to actually uh, learn from the, the, the knowledge and the experience that's out there. Um, and um, and th this, this, to, to um, achieve this has actually been pretty, um, pretty challenging. So finally, we see the background examples of all the different ways that we can think about open and online and distributed learning. And it, it, again, it becomes overwhelming and we really do need to take the, to this and then take a break. And Leo, if you click to just- I faded, I okay. faded it out. I faded, thank you. You faded out the, the chaos and the mess and so we can <laughs> focus on a pivot to open learning, which includes human learning, intentionally designing from the beginning, um, social pods, which are integrated social interaction with this and including them in activities and, and, and creating curriculum uh, or curriculum and content, balancing the EP process with OER, with the product, uh, finding those crossings. That means using press to connect with others and say press like a textbook so let's let's start work on one or working with one so that we can have a common thing to talk about with everyone connecting community promoting learning ecosystems supporting the development of digital faculty and students in the courses integrating it into courses and finally open data and the bias and data and the ethics of open just because we can do something does not should be doing something and think about who is making those decisions um, and who's in control of those settings uh, the final words Bill. and I think I think we are out of time um, but thank you all very much I don't know if we have any um, time for any last questions Thank you so much. I put a um, link to global, your Global Connect page in there so that you can continue the conversation there. Thank you so much. Very much. I related oh, very much to many things you show. <laughs> awesome, Christina, you're chicken. Good job.